Well, in the home stretch, last two chapters of Second Nephi. Change of plans, change of game. Nothing comes to pass in these chapters. So, I decided to come up with a new game. Uh, chapter 32 uh, goes into speaking in tongues some more. I thought about using that, but but I see they mentioned the Holy Ghost a lot. So, this is the Holy Ghost drinking game. And, um, didn't think it was a twist off. I've never tried this. It is... Hog heaven! Look at the cute little piggies! They're having a heavenly time! Okay! Hog heaven! I like the look of that. All right. Last two chapters, let's just blow them out together. Anytime you see Holy Ghost, have a drink if you want. I'm going to. And I've just finished doing the other, the other video. <laughs> Chapter 32. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I suppose that ye ponder somewhat in your hearts concerning that which ye should do after ye have entered by the way. But behold, why do you ponder these things in your hearts? Do you, but do ye not remember that I have said unto you that after ye have received the Holy Ghost? It's okay. It's not bad. Ye, after you get the Holy Ghost, uh, ye could speak with the tongue of angels. Now I'll drink to that. So what exactly does that mean since Mormons don't speak in tongues? What's it doing here? Little uh, leftover... Uh, I guess they don't quote this one much, huh? Yeah, the tongue of angels. And how, and wait, and now, how can ye speak with the tongue of angels? Save it be by the Holy Ghost. This is okay. Wow. <laughs> Got a head on it. Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I say unto you, feast upon the words of Christ. It has some of those little uh, crackers while you're at it. <clears throat> For behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things that ye should do. Wherefore, after I have spoken these words, if ye cannot understand them, it will be because ye ask not, neither do you know. 
neither do ye knock. Wherefore, ye are not brought into the light, but must perish in the dark. For behold, again I say unto you, if ye will enter by the way and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show unto you all things that ye should do. Shit, he's repeating himself. <laughs> he just said that in verse 3. Now he's saying in verse 5. Behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and it repeats itself quite a bit. But behold, I say, wait, all right. Behold, this doctrine is of Christ, and it will be no more doctrine given. There will be no more doctrine given until after he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh. Mahala, Mahala Mosura. And when he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh, the things which he shall say unto you, you shall observe to do. Ye shall observe to do. Excuse me. Ye. And now I, Nephi, hopefully for, hopefully for the last time, cannot say more. Yeah, we wish. The Spirit stoppeth mine utterance, and I am left to mourn because of the unbelief and the wickedness and the ignorance and the stiff nakedness of men. For they will not search knowledge nor understand great knowledge when it is given unto them in blindness, stupid! Even as plain as word can be. And now, my beloved brethren, I perceive that ye ponder still in your hearts, and it grieveth me that I must speak concerning this thing. For if ye would hearken unto the Spirit, which teacheth a man to pray, ye would know that ye must pray. For the evil spirit teacheth not a man to pray, but teacheth him that he must not pray. But behold, I say unto you, that ye must pray always, and not faint, that ye must not perform anything unto the Lord, save in the first place ye shall pray unto the Father in the name of Christ, that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the wel wor welfare of thy soul. And that's chapter 32. It's okay. Maybe it just doesn't follow the scotch very well. Chapter 33. The last fucking chapter. The Denouement of Nephi. Until like 3rd Nephi, way the fuck back there. And now I, Nephi, cannot write all the things which are taught among my people. Neither am I 
mighty in writing. Yeah, not a very good editor either. For an abridgment guy, you run a little long. Like unto speaking. Yeah, he's good at running on. He thinks he's a good speaker because he does it a lot. Sometimes less is like I'm just speaking. Yeah. yeah. For when a man speaketh by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. Crazy about this one. Nah, I'm crazy about it. The Holy Ghost carrieth it unto the hearts of the children of men. But behold, there are many that harden their hearts against the Holy Spirit. You know, that's close enough. Holy Spirit. Spirit is a ghost. I guess you'd call that an owl. Hog heaven. I don't know if I'd feed it to my hog. And I used to raise hogs. That it hath no place in them, wherefore they cast many things away, which are written and esteemed them as things of not, but I, Nephi, have written what I have written, and I esteem it as of great worth, I'll bet you do, and especially unto my people, for I pray continually for them by day. What's the point? You know how everything ends. It's God's will. Pray, prayer is canceled out by God's will. You know, according to Hoyle. <sighs> for I pray continually for them by day, and mine eyes Water my pillow by night, <laughs> you pussy. Hey, guys cry, but they don't talk about it. <laughs> your eyes water your pillow. <laughs> it's very absorbent, I hope. Because of them, and I cry unto my God in faith. And I know that he will hear my cry, because it's my party, and I'll cry if I want to, bitch. Motherfucker. <laughs> this book sucks. Look how I have to dress it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that the Lord God will consecrate my prayers. For the gain of my people. And the words which I have written in weakness will be made strong unto them, for it persuaded them to do good. Good. Glad to hear it. It maketh known unto them of their fathers. And it speaketh of Jesus, and persuaded them to believe in Him, and, it, and to endure to the end, which is life eternal. And it speaketh harshly against sin. According to the plainness of truth, Wherefore, no man will be angry at the words which I have written, save he shall be 
save he shall be of the spirit of the devil. I glory in plainness, I glory in truth, I glory in my Jesus, the Mormon Jesus. judgment seat. Oh, I get it. You'll be sitting at his judgment seat. Is this Joe Jr.? Chime in. Let me know. I'm learning so much already. Like Mormons don't speak in tongues, but their book tells them they should. <laughs> I have charity for my people and great faith in Christ at I shall meet many souls spotless at his judgment seat. Sorry, I did that already. I have charity for the Jew, even though they killed Jesus. I say Jew because I mean them from which I came. But you're spotless from Jesus' death being in North America and dead already. The time of his birth, life. And horrible death and alleged resurrection. From whence I came, I also have charity for the Gentiles for some reason. But behold, for none of these can I hold hope except they shall be reconciled unto Christ and enter into the narrow gate and walk the straight path which leads to life and continue in the path until the end of the day of probation which means until you croak they want your whole fucking life roll those dice Fuck this life. Fuck the world. Only God loves the world. You're supposed to hate it. And now, my beloved brethren, and also Jew, and all ye ends of the earth, hearken unto these words and believe in Christ. Like four to five hundred years before his fucking birth. But we're celebrating his death, resurrection, and his being the perfect biatch, I mean sacrifice, to end all sacrifices. So now we're just eating crackers and drinking Kool-Aid. And if ye believe not in these words, believe in Christ anyway. If you can't be a Mormon, at least be a Christian. That's that's pretty wide of you, Joseph. Put that down. Joe Jr., you fucked hard. <laughs> and if ye believe in Christ, ye will believe in these words! For they are the words of Christ. Just believe this line of bullshit. There's one of you guys born every minute, I understand. Mormons, I mean. 
and he hath given them unto me. And they teach all men that they should do good. That's nice. I wish they would do good. And if they are not the words of Christ, yeah, you said that before, judge ye, for Christ will show it to you with power and great glory. They, they are his words at that last day. And you shall stand face to face before his bar, and ye shall know that I have been commanded of him to write these words, notwithstanding my weakness. And I pray the Father in the name of Christ that many of us, if not all, may be saved in his kingdom at that great and last day. And now, my beloved brethren, and all those who are of the house of Israel, and all ye ends of the earth, I speak unto you as the voice of one crying from the dust. He even parts dust. He's so fucking worn out. I'm tired. No. He finds. God had it. Farewell until that great day shall come. And you that will not partake of the goodness of God and respect the words of the Jews and also the words and also my words, and the words which shall proceed forth out of the ma mouth of the Lamb of God. And behold, I bid you an everlasting farewell, for these words shall condemn you in the last day. So those are Nephi's penultimate words to the world, is that his words will condemn you in the last day. Fuck you if you're not with me. Nephi, you're a prick. So is Joseph Smith Jr. And probably Sr. But what I seal on earth shall be brought against you at the judgment bar for thus hath the Lord commanded me, and I must obey. Amen. And that's the end of this fucking Nephi, you And so I'll see you in hog heaven. I just don't want to drink anymore of it. Peace. Fuck it. And have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is. Because I appreciate every one of you. Peace out. Bye. See, bye.